So we had a customer who needed to run an OLED in some extreme humidity conditions. And these OLEDs have their humidity spec and we can't really guarantee them outside of that. But just to wonder what would happen, we decided what would happen if you ran an OLED underwater. So I've got this OLED operating here and we're just going to add a little more water and let the water come up over the OLED and see what happens. So far so good, no smoke. So we'll go all the way up to the brim, which would even get the components on the tail wet. So at this point the OLED is operating completely underwater all the way up to but not including the ZIF connector. And you know, so far so good for this 30 seconds. So we'll check back in an hour and let you know what we find. Okay, so that's been about an hour uh, completely underwater. Still seems to be functioning fine. Uh, the water we've got it dipped in is water straight from a reverse osmosis tap, so it isn't laden with minerals. It's not exactly pure distilled water, but it's pretty low mineral content. And we also have not dipped the connector, so if you had the connector under high humidity, that might impact stuff. And it's only been an hour. I would expect some corrosion or migration to be happening around the capacitors on that tail. Um, but I would also expect that process to be fairly slow. So maybe we'll let it go for one day and take a look at that. Quick update before I go home for the day. It's now been going for four hours. Still looks good. No signs of weirdness. Okay, it did seem to work overnight. It is now about 19 hours operation submerged. Looks like I'll have to add a little more water because it's down below a couple of the capacitors. Okay, at this point we've been underwater for a little more than 24 hours and everything still seems to be happy. There's those bubbles on there, but I think those are just, you know, from... Uh, uh, you know, gas that was trapped in the water and nucleated out on it there. It's certainly not coming out of it. Okay, now it's been about 27 hours and I'm pretty sure we're having some trouble. It's visibly dimmer, so something is not happy. Okay, it's now been a little over a day, about 33 hours, and this is definitely an X OLED display. So, while Running it for a very short time in water doesn't seem to kill it. Running it for more than a day definitely does. Taking a close look at the tail, it appears that there's some discoloration underneath the capton that is put as an insulator over the capacitors which are used for voltage generation on the tail. So the capton's still on. You can see some bubbles underneath there. And on the lower center of the screen you can see some kind of discolored whitish looking stuff. I think that's corrosion. Let's take off the capton. So underneath the capton, this is the area that was had bare metal contacts where those capacitors are soldered to the flex, and that area was submerged underwater. Uh, there's fairly high voltages on there, around 7 volts. So what happened is, uh, you know, it was a galvanic circuit closed and formed a battery, and stuff migrated from one component to the other, probably completely shutting down the voltage generator on this tail. So if you're absolutely desperate to get this module to work in wet conditions, uh, one approach might be to conformally code those components. These components are not related to the fact that this is no LED. Any components on any circuit board in these conditions would have a similar corrosion. So I scrubbed the corrosion off those components and a normal component like this over here, you can see both of the end caps on this capacitor. And these capacitors that were underwater, you can see that this lower end cap, which was, um, judging by this, might might have been this might have been ground here. So this note over here was some positive voltage. Anyway, that end cap and the one above it, they're both completely um, corroded away, completely, completely gone. So that's very likely what the failure was. So here I've taken the four components off and. The top three components, both pads seem to be intact. Bottom component on the right, that pad is gone. 
That could be because of my sloppy soldering technique or desoldering technique, but I think I was pretty gentle. I'm pretty sure that that pad had been compromised. Here's a close-up of that bottom component with the missing pad. The pad should be in here. Um, what's interesting is that the trace that connects it, you can see traces that are in good shape up here. This trace that's in poor shape completely disappears for this area. And um, the solder mask is what gives it this yellow color on these traces. And above the solder mask is this white epoxy silk screen. So the corrosion has taken the metal all the way out under the solder mask under the silk screen back to about this area. So that is definitely a failure point. Okay, we're going to try spraying one of these with a conformal coating. So this is MG Chemicals conformal coating, blah, blah, blah. And there's the part number. Okay, so we've got the OLED in the water. This one has conformal coating of the components. And it was heat cured at about three hours at 215 degrees F, about 100 degrees C, as per the instructions on the conformal coating. Okay, this has been under about three hours now. I can see some bubbling around the components. Those components were coated with conformal coating, but since there's bubbling there, I think there's electrolysis going on. So either that coating is not rated or not working for this type of application, or I didn't apply it correctly. But I do predict that this one will fail because there's bubbling. I think there's bubbling because there's electrolysis, and if there's electrolysis, it's only a certain amount of time until it fails. Okay, even with the cured conformal coating, that display is completely gone in 18 hours. So I'm going to try dipping those components in epoxy, and we'll see if we can get better seal. These are some close-ups of the conformally coated tail after it failed. Um, things don't look that great. I don't know if this is a problem with my application of the coating or if I chose the wrong coating or what's going on there, but it definitely did not work. If you want to try conformal coating, definitely try to contact somebody who's got good knowledge on conformal coating practices before you make a decision. Okay, we did not have good luck with conformal coating protecting those components when they were completely submerged underwater. So for our next test subject, I'm going to try this hardware store epoxy. It says it's moisture resistant right on the package. So we got it mixed up and just going to dip it in and uh, jiggle it around a little bit and then uh, withdraw it slowly and if you can pull them out real slow the surface tension of the epoxy helps make a nice even film okay another day another display this is the display with the epoxy encapsulation over the capacitors the epoxy has been cured for about 20 hours under uh, the warm output of a computer fan. Okay, well, after a bare module working underwater for, I think, a day, and the uh, conformal coated on the components working for like, I don't know, what, 12 hours or something, this module with the epoxy on it has lasted, lasted only like maybe four hours and it's completely dead. So, I don't have a good solution for waterproofing the components on the tail. This is a close-up of the tail that was dipped in epoxy. This is after failure. It doesn't look that bad, but there are some bubbles in there that I'm not that proud of. When you look at the components, like this capacitor, the top cap is eaten away. Um, there is a bubble there, but the bubble's down by the root of the joint, not at the top cap. This next component actually looks like it's grown some kind of a whisker of some kind. Pretty scary. Anyway, to be fair to the epoxy, it was just hardware store epoxy, something that grabbed quickly. It's not rated for electronics, and perhaps the application wasn't done correctly. So with a proper epoxy, maybe you could make that work. But for my quick test, it was not effective. 
Okay, at this point I've given up on trying to encapsulate the components up on the tail. I will have to leave waterproofing those components to somebody who knows more about it than I do. Um, so this is a, another test and only the display and the COB and the edge of the tail is underwater. Uh, if I flick the water here a little bit you can probably see where the level is. And we'll see how long that one runs. Okay, this sample which has not been submerged in the water up to the components has now been operating successfully for about 20 hours. We'll check in on it in a bit later. Okay, this display with the water completely submerging the display but not the components on the tail has now gone about 48 hours and it still looks fine. Okay, it's been about another 24 hours and this sample which does not have any components submerged but does have the entire display submerged is still operating correctly. Okay, it's been another 24 hours and this display, as long as the components are not submerged, only the else, the, only the OLED glass and its chip on glass and the start of the flex tail is submerged, still going strong. Okay, about another day has gone by, still going strong. Guess I need to add a little more water to make up for evaporation there. Okay, it's been a couple more days and this one's still working like a champ. You can tell by the evaporation that it's been a while. Okay, this module is still operating correctly. It's completely submerged and I think at this point we can safely say that at least for this sample, having the module itself, the glass and the chip and the seal and the start of the flux submerged does not seem to cause any trouble at all. Um, submerging the components, big problem. As you can see from the evaporation, it's been another couple days. This display is still operating correctly, even though it's submerged in water. We did have a lot of trouble with the, if we submerge the components underwater, but as long as only the display is underwater, it seems to operate fine. Of course, this would void your warranty and need to operate the display within the parameters specified in the data sheet. But for at least this one example, it doesn't appear that the display is hugely sensitive. Okay, this module that has the module itself, the chip-on glass, and a little bit of the tail submerged, but the components in the air, has now been operating submerged for three weeks. This concludes our test. We had that module underwater for three weeks and it did survive. To be clear, you do need to follow the recommended humidity limits in the data sheet and we don't recommend sticking this underwater. It will void your warranty. So please let us know if you have any questions. You can contact us below. 